Welcome back to the report, ladies and gentlemen, here with uh, your host, uh, Richard Wollstonecroft, and we're talking about um, the European elections and the British Empire. What, what keep China British? I'm a funny bastard, aren't I? Okay, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's talk about the European elections. Okay, this is even more serious than the Australian elections where uh, the Liberal Party gave a sound thrashing to uh, the Labor Party and sent them essentially into um, political, um, the political wasteland, at least to the other election. I think the Labor Party locally are unelectable now for many, many years. But the European elections... Okay, well, um, you know, obviously the, uh, the EU, the members who, who uh, represent different countries uh, in the EU, um, they hold elections and they send representatives to the EU, which are meant to represent the people. Uh, and obviously, um, essentially, uh, Britain should not have been taking part in this uh, election because of Brexit. Um, the, um, the British people voted um, quite democratically, about 60 to 40 percent, to leave the EU. Um, and so, well, people at the time thought, well, this is a very unpopular vote. It was like the Donald Trump vote. It was unusual. The elite all wanted this to remain. But I thought people thought democracy has spoken. And essentially, Labour in the UK and the Tories said, all right, well, you know, people have spoken. We don't like this decision, many of us, but we're going to leave the EU. And here is the date. And I thought, well, there you go. And then they're going to whinge. They're going to whinge. They're going to complain. They're maybe going to try and sabotage it, I thought. But eventually, on the date that they said, UK, which is essentially, and let's be 100% prescient, lucid and honest about this, the entire world democratic system is a result of Britain, the United Kingdom and the British Empire. Everything, every system of democracy you see that actually works in this world is a direct copy of the Westminster system. And I essentially say that the only reason there is democracy on this planet is the English people right now, and possibly the French, who you can um, attach the ideas of the, the Rousseau and um, the French Revolution and these kind of democratic ideas that kind of burst forth in a revolutionary um, explosion in the late 18th century, um, but which also caused um, the Great Terror and many other um, revolutions that ended up destructively recently and, uh, and stuff. But let's go back to the, uh, to the EU elections. Um, on the date uh, the UK was meant to leave the, the, uh, um, the EU, it didn't. And um, I really don't know what to say. I, I have not seen in my lifetime, even in my grandfather's lifetime, who was born in the previous century, um, um, anything like that. Um, that British democracy would ever actually be ignored in my lifetime. I, 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 I still feel absolutely shocked by it, to be perfectly honest, that the people who literally invented um, democracy um, in essentially the Western world uh, have themselves now sidelined democracy in relation to at least one election. So I think this is a huge disaster for the whole world. Um, um, I always thought the globalist uh, cabal that operates within some elements of the British aristocracy, some elements of the Tory party, a lot of elements of the media in the UK, and obviously a lot of the Labour Party, would, would complain and, and, and do things and attempt to sabotage it. I didn't think they would succeed, but they did succeed. So, you know, um, but this is very interesting because, you know, when something like that happens, people notice, you know what I mean? People notice when a British, you know, an actual British election um, is ignored. It's very much like the Australian S, you know, uh, same sex marriage vote, you know, um, that was held the yes and no. I supported no. But when yes won, I was very much fair enough. The people have spoken. And I would have joined the ranks of any protesters if that same sex marriage vote had not gone through, even though I supported no, because, you know, essentially the people had spoken on the matter and I thought, well, that's fair enough. And if that election was ignored, it would be t terribly shocking. But anyway, the results of all that are this, that, you know, um, Nigel Farage decided to um, fi find, sorry, found the Brexit party. Um, it, it, the party was only founded three months ago. And um, uh, UKIP, which was his former party, had uh, been taken over by people who are a bit more far right. And they also employed uh, Tommy Robinson. Oh, I love all these people. I like the new leader of UKIP and I like Tommy Robinson. But Nigel Farage is essentially a true, essentially a Tory, um, except who actually believes in the British people, unlike the Tories who are mainly controlled now by the globalists. So um, uh, Nigel Farage founded the uh, Brexit party. And even though the party is three months old, he beat the Tories and he beat um, Labour combined in the um, 
EU general election. So that tells you what's going on. It was a huge nationalist defeat, and this happened all over Europe. Uh, sorry, not defeat, uh, victory all over Europe. Um, you know, I mean, uh, and another piece of extraordinary news, uh, Macron beat, uh, sorry, Le Pen beat Macron for the first time, um, which is a... Uh, which will tell you what will happen in the next French general election. So, you know, France will be the next one to go. But, you know, I mean, the globalists know that if France falls, that's it for the EU. Uh, because the two major countries of the EU are Germany and France. Germany is essentially occupied um, since World War II by the Americans. And obviously the Americans are controlled by the globalists and, and from Tel Aviv. So, um, you know, in a way, uh, they also control Germany. And um, I doubt there can actually be fair elections held in Germany. Um, I believe they will cheat, and they'll probably do that in France. But if there are democratic elections possibly still capable of being held in France, I believe Marine Le Pen will win the next general election in France. And this will absolutely transform Europe, because as soon as France falls, Germany will fall very soon after that. And then the EU, I mean, the EU doesn't necessarily have to collapse. It can just be essentially made into a nationalist collective rather than a globalist collective. I mean, you don't need to necessarily destroy the EU. I do think Britain needs to leave where it can. It's always been separate to Europe. It can, from there, work with Europe. Um, I believe um, the way to go with Brexit, hard Brexit is the only way to go. And the reason for this is very simple. Um, the globalists who, I mean, obviously, absolutely do control the, uh, the EU, um, and they still do, even though nationalists have had a resounding uh, victory in these recent elections. Um, they will not um, negotiate properly with the UK until hard Brexit. Once hard Brexit has, has happened, then the EU will be as sweet as pie because they will be attempting to limit the damage to themselves. And I'm like, fuck, you know, we've got to do something. This is going to really hurt the EU. It's going to hurt Germany, definitely. Um, so they will act really nice after hard Brexit, but before they will act like the biggest pricks on earth. So you have to enact hard Brexit, then you will get the best deal. And Donald Trump knows this. He's been advising them. And Nigel Farage knows this. And if necessary, there'll be a, um, a new uh, UK general election. But, you know, the um, nationalists had victories all over Europe. Um, uh, even in um, some local elections and, you know, were also held uh, in, in, in Belgium, for example, a far right party achieved a tremendous um, uh, victory. There's a new, new party in, in um, Denmark that's achieving nationalist. Um, uh, it's, this is a whole revolution happening all across Europe, like anything unseen in many, many years. It's extraordinary. And Salvini, the Italian leader, is uniting to... Um, to, uh, to kind of put together within the EU itself a kind of nationalist block. And this is the way to go, really. I mean, the EU, you don't necessarily have to get rid of it. It just needs to be nationalist. You know, it just needs to be like fortress Europe. You know what I mean? And all the troublemakers who recently arrived here need to be deported. Um, the people who don't have um, visas and things, they need to be like Donald Trump and things will change very, very quickly. Um, you know, I don't think things are in a very disastrous situation, but they can be easily fixed if the EU just had a more, it doesn't have to be radical nationalist, even if it just had a general nationalist point of view. I think it would be tremendous. And I think, you know, the middle ground between what's going on at the moment is essentially that that will happen. But, you know, obviously, as the EU is essentially uh, an organ for, um, you know, the new world order for the Rothschild, um, you know, global slavery um, concept, um, it's going to be very difficult. And I think the EU will at least probably need to be replaced with something else. So, you know, you're seeing some, a tremendous revolution happening here that will determine essentially the entire fate of humanity. And obviously, whatever happens in Europe and whatever happens in America and Australia, in Western countries, will echo on across the world. And if we can liberate ourselves, we will liberate the entire planet. We will um, solve world hunger. We will end war we will essentially uh, have created a true utopia on this planet. So it's a tremendous opportunity right now. And the nationalists are leading the way um, for the entire um, saviour of the human race.